Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to another edition of AP Vocabulary. Bruce is on the scene, and he's thinking about making an appearance in this video. We'll see if I can convince him to come up here or not. He's hesitant. He's shy. But we're going to be talking about uh, the Islamic heartlands from 1750 to 1900 and what was going on in and around Egypt in North Africa and the Middle East. Um, this is kind of area that was slowly falling out of under the control of the Ottoman Empire and starting to try to find themselves in this world where the Europeans seem to be slowly encroaching and starting to uh, kind of imperialize, colonize, control. Uh, and so the, the Islamic heartland ways of dealing with that, essentially, are kind of what happened. So we're going to look at a few different vocab words. We're going to look at Mirad. Uh, from Egypt of the Mamluk dynasty and what happened with the French and the Mamluks when they battled. We are going to look at Muhammad Ali, the leader of Egypt, not the boxer, and his military and economic reforms in Egypt in order to try to get Egypt up to date with the Europeans. We'll look at the Suez Canal and its major interest to the Europeans at this time. Then we'll take a look at some differing opinions on how the uh, Islamic heartlands should react to this European invasion. Um, some people who who were hoping to see a um, more reforms on the part of the Islamic world, uh, including uh, Al Afghani and his disciple Muhammad Abda, as well as their clashes with. Uh, people who felt exactly the opposite, that the world of Islam needed to purify itself and rid itself of these European influences and those who would accept them under um, uh, Muhammad Ahmad and Khalifa Abdullahi, who together, well, Muhammad, Muhammad Ahmad was the Mahdi and his followers were the Mahdists who believed that he was uh, sent to kind of purify Islam. And so there was kind of two hardline factions here at force, and so we're going to look at all those things right now. So first, let's take a look at um, Mirad and the, and the leader of the Mamluk armies who encountered the French. When the French came down uh, under Napoleon, essentially um, the Mamluks were not too concerned, and the Islamic world was not exactly concerned either. They kind of overestimated their own abilities to take on this European army, um, and they lost. So Murad was the head of the Mamluks. He lost the major battles to the French, which resulted in uh, kind of embarrassment to the Mamluks, but it also showed that these um, Muslim core areas, it showed them that they were outmatched, outgunned by the European military technologies uh, and strategies that they had not considered before. If you remember, the Mamluks were the ones who were able to stop the Mongols from encroaching further into Africa, and so they had a reputation of being pretty tough, and when they were defeated by the French, it made them um, feel otherwise. So the French beat them. Now, eventually the British would come in and kind of beat up on the French and get them out of there very quickly, mainly because the British wanted control of this area and not, um, not the French, not allow the French to control it. And part of this was because, essentially, um, that's an area that would become vitally strategic to uh, Europe, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. So in comes uh, the leader of Egypt, Muhammad Ali, and Muhammad Ali was a leader who had attempted to reform both military, uh, make military and economic reforms in Egypt. Um, first of all, militarily was essentially adopting new European guns and technologies and tactics, as well as hiring European commanders to help train troops. Um, this was similar to what was going on in the Ottoman Empire as well. Um, and economically, really attempted to kind of pour a lot of resources into um, growing some cash crops, uh, especially cotton. Egyptian cotton uh, was well known and world renowned, and the Europeans uh, could buy that raw material up. Um, these these reforms didn't necessarily do anything to really help Egypt out a lot, um, aside from the military reforms, but um, we'll see that that didn't make much of a difference because they eventually would lose out to the Europeans who would have the military advantage. Um, which kind of brings us to why the Europeans were even involved in Egypt, and it was because of the building and the possibility of the Suez Canal. 
So the Suez Canal was um, a canal that connected the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea. And the Suez Canal was vitally important to uh, shipping not only for um, commercial interests, but also for military control, because those who would control the Suez Canal would essentially control um, a huge piece of land that connected these two areas, which were not already connected. So the Suez Canal essentially brought Europeans uh, to Egypt because they wanted to be able to get in on this action of controlling uh, canal, which is about 120 miles long. It was finished well prior to the Panama Canal, and so it was uh, one of the greatest projects of its time. Many people in Egypt were working on this. It was mainly peasants who were working on it. It was finished in the late 1800s, and essentially the Europeans wanted control of this Suez Canal. So um, while this was going on, and while the Europeans were essentially coming into and commercially and militarily controlling Egypt, there was kind of a debate among the Egyptians. There were those who believed, such as al-Afghani and uh, his disciple, Muhammad Abdah, who thought that basically the Islamic world needed to embrace some of these um, changes, especially those with uh, learning, math and science, stressed above anything else. And um, they wanted to see the Muslim world kind of move forward. Uh, on the other hand, there were these traditional Muslim scholars who believed that the purification of Islam required that the expulsion of these European forces. They wanted to get rid of the Europeans and oppose any meddling outside. So it basically created two factions within Egypt. Um, and the Europeans were increasingly coming to control Egypt, both um, without, without really colonizing Egypt. They didn't send people down there to live. But they did have control of the Khedives, which was the ruling power in Egypt. And the Khedives were essentially puppets to the British because they were in uh, the British and, and uh, other European powers because they were in debt, so much in debt. They borrowed so much money uh, from Europeans that um, they basically had them in their pocket. So they had to do what they told them. They controlled, the British controlled the finances, they controlled the foreign powers of. Uh, the, the Egyptians and they kind of told them what to do and eventually it became kind of too much and so there was a uh, rebellion and the rebellion was led by Muhammad Ahmad and Muhammad Ahmad was known as Mahdi and Mahdi is a uh, a reference to kind of the savior who would show the true way to purify Islam um, from those who opposed it and so Mahdi call, called for basically to bring Islam back to its original purity, claiming that those who would favor um, new reforms were against Islam. And so uh, he opposed any Egyptians and Europeans who were trying to reform Islam or at least reform the region. And uh, along with his, fo his followers, the Mahdists, they moved south into the Sudanic regions below Egypt and gained quite a force and were able to um, significantly disturb a lot of uh, Egyptians and Europeans who were operating in the area. It became a little bit too much. After Mahdi died, his rebellion lived on under uh, his disciple Khalifa Abdullahi, and um, they would continue to militarily oppose those Europeans and Egyptians who wanted reform uh, until eventually the Europeans, their eventual fate was uh, they were kind of hunted down and the largest factions of them were destroyed by British troops uh, who were wielding much more powerful weapons at the time. So uh, this was prior to the outbreak of World War I, and Europe was very firmly in control of Egypt at this time, and uh, e Egyptians were trying to come to terms with how they should deal with that. So there was a, a, a broad array of responses. So. Uh, we'll come back and believe it or not, within the same chapter, we're going to talk about China and how they responded to the European um, imperialism and basically control from outside. So for the time being, that's, that's all I got for you. Be awesome and take care of yourself.